Hello and welcome to this lecture. This lecture is about AWS Code Deploy. We will be discussing what it is, how it works, and we will deploy a simple application to a fleet of AWS EC2 instances. Let's get started. So, what is AWS Code Deploy? Well, Code Deploy is a deployment service that automates application deployments to Amazon EC2 instances, on premise instances, serverless Lambda functions, or Amazon ECS services. This service plays a major role in continuous delivery and continuous deployment on AWS. Using Code Deploy, we can deploy the code which is stored as .zip or .tar or .tar.gz as of today, stored in Amazon S3 bucket or GitHub or Bitbucket. And we call them as revisions. Along with the code we are deploying, we need to provide app spec file. It is basically a YAML format file similar to what we have seen in code build. It looks like this. The content in the hook section of the app spec file varies depending on the compute platform of our deployment, which are EC2 instances or serverless Lambda functions or Amazon ECS services. The scripts we provide under these hook section will be executed in a certain order, which we will see later in this course. Code deploy comes with certain default deployment configurations. They are basically a set of rules and success and failure conditions used by code deploy during a deployment. They define how the deployment is performed. For example, you can deploy the code to all instances in a fleet at once or you can choose to deploy one at a time. Code deploy comes with two different deployment types. First one is in-place deployment. This is only applicable for EC2 and on-premise compute platforms, not for AWS Lambda and ECS. With in-place deployment, the application on each instance in the deployment group is stopped based on the deployment configuration you choose. The latest application revision is installed and the new version of the application is started and validated. Another deployment type is blue-green deployment. This is supported by all compute platforms. It provisions a new compute platform for replacement environment, which we call as green, installs the latest application revision on replacement environment, reroutes the traffic from old environment, which we call as blue, to replacement environment and terminates old environment. This way, the environment which is serving traffic to users will remain untouched. You can also choose when to switch the traffic to replacement environment and if there is any issue, you can roll back to old environment without terminating it. Blue-green pattern is an important architectural concept many organizations follow these days to effectively deploy without bringing down any services. Code Deploy Agent is a software package which needs to be installed and configured on EC2 instances or on-premise servers in order to be detected by code deploy deployment. Remember, if you do not install this on the instances, code deploy cannot find the instances and deployment will not happen. We will be seeing this during the demo. And also remember the agent is not required for deployments that use Amazon ECS or AWS Lambda compute platforms. This is only applicable for EC2 and on-premise instances. And for logging deployment actions, you can either set up the Amazon CloudWatch Logs agent to view aggregated data in the CloudWatch console, or you can log into an individual instance to review the log files. Now let's see how this works. Similar to code build, we can perform actions on code deploy using console or CLI or SDKs or trigger as part of AWS code pipeline. So with code deploy, we first need to create an application where we define which compute platform we will be deploying to. And then we create a deployment group within the application. With a deployment group, we configure deployment configuration, deployment type, rollbacks, triggers, alarms, etc. And then based on this deployment group, we can create multiple deployments and point each deployment to a specific revision 
which is nothing but the code which we are going to deploy, which could be in an S3 bucket or GitHub or Bitbucket. So once we create deployment, code deploy will start the deployment based on the configuration. And as we discussed, we have two deployment types, right? Let's say we chose in-place deployment, which is only for EC2 and on-premise instances. So we have a fleet of EC2 instances, which are under a load balancer and serving requests to customers. So when the deployment starts, code deploy will check the deployment configuration. For EC2 instances, these are the default configurations provided by code deploy. The first one is all at once, which means the deployment will happen on all instances at once or half at a time to deploy in two halves or one at a time, which means the deployment will happen on one instance at a time. Or you can create a custom configuration wherein you can configure how many minimum instances or percentage you want to keep healthy. So based on this configuration, so let's assume we have chosen one at a time. Code deploy will drain the instance from the load balancer and deploy the revision and perform the hooks based on the app spec YAML file. So during the time code deploy is performing the deployment, the request will only be sent to the healthy instances on the load balancer. And once done, the instance will be added back to the load balancer and start with the next one. Let's say our deployment configuration is all at once. Code deploy will drain out all the instances from the load balancer and start the deployment according to hooks on app spec file. So during this time, your customers cannot access the application until the deployment is complete as there would be no instances within the load balancer. And once the deployment is complete, the instances will be added back to the load balancer and the new changes will be reflected. Now with in-place deployments, there are a couple of drawbacks. One, be it any deployment configuration, which is all at once or half at a time or one at a time, the customer traffic to your application will be affected as at least one instance will be down and rest of the instances need to share the load. This might be unacceptable if your application will have large traffic. And number two, if there is an issue with the new revision after deployment is complete, you will have to scramble for the fix and redeploy the older version if you're lucky to have the revision. Now let's talk about our other deployment type, which is blue green. Let's say we have our original environment where our customers are currently accessing. When the code deploy starts the deployment, Unlike in-place deployment, it does not interrupt with existing environment, which we call as blue. Code deploy starts provisioning similar environment based on the configuration we provide, usually an auto-scaling group which we use for original environment. Once created, code deploy will deploy the latest version to this replacement environment, which we call as green. Once the deployment is complete, Code deploy will switch the traffic from blue environment to green environment. And once you are sure that there are no issues with the new environment, you can terminate the original environment. So this way your customer traffic is never affected and you can easily roll back to original state if there is any issue with the new revision code. So this is how code deploy performs deployment. Now I represented EC2 in this explanation. ECS and AWS Lambda will only have blue-green deployment type and conceptually they pretty much work the same. Now let's briefly take a look at the hooks available for us to be provided in app spec YAML file. So these are the hooks available for ECS and these are for Lambda and these are for EC2 and on-premises instances. So code deploy follows this order while executing the hooks sequentially. You can provide one or more scripts for each hook in here and they get executed in this order. The ones in gray color cannot be scripted. They are being used by code deploy internally. For more detailed information on hooks, you can visit AWS documentation.
For more details check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success Certified.